for those musicians who have um, played at an, at an exceptional level. Um, over the last course of the month, um, the band has been to stay, the symphony orchestra has been to stay, um, and the ensembles, the chamber ensembles, and the soloists have also gone to stay. And while I could not be more opposed to competition in the arts, um, it's just the reality of living in the state of Oregon. And so these are the students who have at some point placed in their various divisions. They are not in placement order. They're just, these are the kids who um, over the course of the weekend um, were amongst the top five, the top four, the top three on their instrument or on their small ensemble, um, chamber ensemble size in the state. So, um, so that I'm not up here talking, I'm just gonna introduce the four that are gonna come out. Um, if everybody did their whole solo, you'd be here till midnight, and the over-under tonight is 9.15, so we're gonna keep going way under that. Um, but the kids are gonna play, the musicians, my apologies, are gonna play um, a minute, minute and a half, to give you a taste of, that's really great, but, they're amazing, and it's just such a, an honor and a pleasure to get to be in the same room with musicians who take the craft so seriously and dedicate themselves to their art form. So, um, the first set of musicians in order, um, Reese Hunsaker on bassoon, and then Anna Caps on flute, and then India Roan on bassoon, and then we're gonna end with Melinda Lynn on violin. So, it would be very appropriate to applaud when each of them are done, but I don't want to be here when they're doing it because it's their show. So here's Reese.
Thank you so much. It's going to take about two minutes for us to get the country band one up on stage, and then we're going to um, then we're going to have like a band concert. It's going to be awesome. So again, now you have to meet somebody new, which might mean you have to twist around. So start stretching. Ready? Go.
Thank you for your patience. This is Contraband One. Um, every year, I remind myself, well, every year there's a day about in April where we're warming up and it strikes me that, oh my gosh, they sound like a high school band. And I know that sounds snotty, but it's really not intended to be. It's, it's like everything we've been working on, long tones and everything else just sits. And all of a sudden it's like, yes, there's the sound. And it's, it's just a wonderful day. And every time at, at that day, I say to myself, okay, next year for sure, I'm gonna record the first day in September. And one day I will. So, so far, I'm like, I'm like 0 for 37 right now, but, um, oh well. So, um, this is the, the contraband. We're gonna be playing three selections for you. The first one is by a gentleman by the name Willie Owens. Willie was the head of the National Music Educators Association. Um, he's a wonderful gentleman and loves to write just fun music. This is entitled Carnegie Anthem. strings and the clarinets covered the violin parts etc and then people discovered the possibilities of the wind ensemble and there was a complete you know it's just like any pendulum right everything was was orchestra transcriptions people went oh i think not that's so old school and they got away from it and, and there's been wonderful repertoire written in the last 50 60 years um and we're realizing many people are realizing that, that you can have both and it's really great so 
Um, this next piece is a transcription by a Dutch composer, Johan de Mesh, uh, of the hymn from Jupiter from the planets. So it's kind of full circle, we're doing the planets here, and then later on we're gonna bring it back to an American rendition of the planets, some people call it Star Wars, but don't tell. So um, <laughs> this is the hymn from Jupiter. years ago, there were all these really neat awards scattered all over the walls in the, in the band room. There was um, awards named after people who had come in and helped over the last 20 years. There were, named, there were awards for most outstanding member of this ensemble, that ensemble, most improved, most outstanding. It was just wonderful. And I thought, why would I ever change that? Because it's so easy to get lost in large ensembles. And so anything we can to try to give some individual recognition to, to kids that deserve it, I think is a really great thing. Um, to that end, I don't do any of the voting. And I don't choose a single name, because I wouldn't want that pressure. And I don't think it's a fair fight for me to decide. And so instead, I have the kids decide. And, and they all get to vote, and they all get three votes, and blah, blah, blah. Um, and the, the best part about it for me every year when this happens is that um, both in this band and the next band, I was going through, I have it on a grid and I'm taking tallies and blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh man, this is going to be funky. And oh, virtually every single student received at least one vote from one other person for being, yeah, right? It's good. I just think it's really super and it uh, speaks well to the community. So um, so to that end, there are a couple of words we're gonna do for every, every group. I've written them down. So um, to me, especially in the concert band one, um, the most improved 
is one of my favorites because I just love it when people recognize people who have really grown for whatever reason and, and have really like shown a spark or have finally like settled into themselves and like going, cool, I can do this, it's really awesome. So the most improved, oh, this is a token plaque because if we sit and wait for them to come and grab up, it doesn't work very well. So their name is gonna go on this plaque and it's gonna be in the band room. So parents, you can go in sometime next week, I hope, when they get back, and you can take a picture of the plaque, right? So, um, but it looks like. So the most improved musician in Concert Band One has voted by his peers this year. Real drummer, would give me a drum roll, is Chase Elliott on trombone. Standing, there were literally five kids within one vote of each other. It was like, oh, and so I had my wife decide. No, I'm just like, um, so I just went with the kids because they get to decide things because it's their band. I'm in front of them for a while, but it's going to be their band long after I'm gone. So, so on Concert Band One, most outstanding musician this year, you heard him on trumpet there, Spencer Howard. and he loves to take American folk songs. And you'll often hear that America does not have a folk song tradition and those people could not be more wrong. And you should do yourself a favor and you should learn at least one folk song a week. We forget, <laughs> we forget that we sing together. And when we sing together, we get to know each other better. And somewhere along the way, somebody decided that you had to be a real trained singer to sing and that just couldn't be more wrong. So learn a folk song and sing it with your kids and have fun with it, because that's what they're supposed to be. It's just fun. This is a collection of three settings of American folk songs. They're called Legends and Heroes, um, and I'd love to go through the story, but did I mention the 915 cutoff? And there's a long story. So, um, teasing. Um, there are three moments. The first one is Patrick on the railway. The second one is Sweet Betsy in a fast waltz setting. And the last one is Little David, play on. So, Legends and Heroes, Country Man.
we're going to have our solos play in the round so we can hopefully, uh, you know, just make not too much transition time. The next set of solos, um, again, I'll have them introduce themselves, but um, we're going to have three solos. And, and the great thing about it is that they're so varied and, and both in instrument and in, and in repertoire. So I think you're going to really dig it. Um, the first one will be Caleb Kirkland on Barry Sax. Second one will be David Butson on tuba. And the last one will be our state champion this year, Dean Banks.
It's, uh, it's been a big month for Westland High School students making their conducting premieres. Um, Koharu conducted the Met Fall New Symphony out of the Arlene Schnitzer Hall. And I thought, gosh, she did such a great job. And it was so fun to, to watch a student conduct. Um, and in this class all year long, Koharu has been helping out, as well as Robert Bomer has been helping out. And I think it was last week I looked at him and I said, you should conduct this piece. And he goes, yeah, cool. So, <laughs> making his conducting debut, if you would welcome to the podium for uh, Jack Stamp's Cenotaph, a fanfare for wind ensemble, our conductor, Mr. Robert, Robert Bomer. For those of you who've been here before, you know that I'm a big Richard Sauceo fan. Richard was a high school band director who just wanted to write music for his own band, and who knew? He was really good at it. Of course we all knew, because he was a great band director, too. This next piece is just really fun. He wrote it for um, one of his bands back in Indiana. It's based loosely, very loosely, on Aaron Copeland's Hoedown. This is called American Barn Dance. Thank you. 
This next song is based on a um, well-known English folk song, um, originally set to music by Ray Fawn Williams, um, and used um, as a, a main theme for one of his movements to Lincolnshire Posey, a very um, kind of part of the solid canon of challenging wind ensemble repertoire. This is a setting by Larry Dean, um, and it has all the same elements, but it takes away just a little bit, enough of the technical demand and extreme range demand so that it makes it a little bit more playable by high school students. This is theme from Green Russian Bushes, pardon me, by Ray Fong Williams, setting by Larry Dean.
Um, I'm especially proud. I'm especially proud. I'm, I'm, I'm especially proud of this group. I think they've really come a long way this year. There's been so much individual growth, and with it has come this really good sense of ensemble sound. It's just been it's been very exciting to be a part of. Um, and I really owe a lot of it to um, the student aid who've been helping out Koharo, and you saw what a great job Robert did earlier. Sorry, what a great job Robert did earlier conducting and. Um, he has been, well, they've both just been wonderful about taking individual kids and helping and making sure that everybody grew in confidence, grew in technical abilities. It's just been a really, really, really wonderful experience for me as a teacher to watch. So um, I just wanted to really thank them for that. Um, the kids voted, and um, there were, sometimes it just happens, and, and when there's a tie, there's room on the plaque for two names. So we're gonna give two names for most improved. Um, so if you would, don't clap until I tell them both. Um, the first one has um, done an outstanding job this year. Um, when, when we needed help in um, another ensemble, he was like, sure, I'll learn that part. I'll work extra and I'll come in at lunch and I'll come in before school and I'll turn myself into an incredible mallet player, which he has. And then when the day before state happens and we're going, oh, dude, the bass drum part is more important than the mallet part, and I know you spent 50 hours on the mallet part, but we really need the bass drum more, he went, fine. <laughs> <laughs> and he waited to say anything more until he was out of earshot, which was just a really great mature moment. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I would have done that at that age. But um, anyway, so one of the most improved people this year in this, as voted by their, his peers, Mr. Wyatt Davis. Back there. light years and has been willing to say, look, I just want to get better. So tell me what to do and, and tell me who to work with and, and he's just done a great job. I think it was, um, I think there were two different people. When they voted, I just asked them to put names on a paper. But you'd be amazed how much commentary teenagers are more than happy to share with you, <laughs> right? And so more than one person said, well, one person said this name, duh. And the other person was like, it's so obvious, right? <laughs> so, um, so it's just really fun. And luckily, he got as many votes as Wyatt. So if you would, please give a round of applause for Austin Gian on Alpha's <laughs> It's very heartwarming to see everybody getting votes, everybody being recognized by their peers, and it was really fun. Um, but in an overwhelming landslide of a vote, and I, I think I would have gone the same way had it been left up to me, but, um, and I love that um, oftentimes um, percussion gets the short end of the stick, no pun. So, um, because while everybody else is working on learning one instrument, they're working on learning 10. And while some people think it's just no brainer to like how hard can it be to take a big stick with a cotton ball on it and hit a big log covered by a big dead piece of cow and, <laughs> and make music out of it, right? They have the most limited technology and we expect them to make or break the wind ensemble or to make or break the band and it's the most challenging instrument in the world. The hardest thing I've ever done in my life as a musician is, and I'm dead serious, we were playing a, a percussion ensemble, and since I was the director, I had to play the cowbell and keep the tempo. <laughs> and if you've ever tried to keep tempo while people are doing polyrhythms around you and doing fives over sixes against threes and fours, and, and the other director and I who were both playing cowbell were dripping, <laughs> just, it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. It was so, and it was like, ah, it gave me a really pre a huge appreciation for percussion and all the things that they do. So, the most outstanding musician as voted by her peers tonight is Sophie Ellis. Right. 
tickle. She's trapped by the tendon. So, <laughs> so um, thanks again for being here. Our last piece with Coach Man tonight is uh, another David Holsinger piece because I love David and I love his music and it's fun. And this is Haven Dance. Um, Haven Dance, uh, he wrote it for his, I think she was four at the time, and she loved to dance around, his daughter loved to dance around the living room. And so this is his vision of, or his musical interpretation of his four-year-old daughter dancing around the living room. She grew up to be a Broadway dancer, but not so much. Okay, here we go. Thank you. Haven Dance.
Bir So the next three groups are all ensembles who went to state. Um, the first group is the clarinet quintet. I would love to take even a smidgen of credit for the high quality performance that they gave, but truth be told, they chose all the music and they did all the rehearsing themselves. And I think that's why I love ensembles more than anything because it's all about the kids working together and, and building each other up and, and getting great performances because of it. So um, the clarinet quintet is first, and then um, Robert and Kate are gonna come out and play one of my favorite duets of all time. I don't know what part of it they're gonna play, but the title is Devil's Waltz. So if you ever wanna have fun and hear the whole thing, go on YouTube and look up Devil's Waltz, but they, they kill it, it's awesome. You're gonna really love it. And then the last one is the Sakiyama sisters who are going to do part of the Bach double. And I think you're going to really dig it. So first up, the clarinets.
the greatest musical ever written in the history of mankind was West Side Story, with the greatest music and the greatest instrumentation, the greatest orchestration, and I'll fight anybody who says otherwise. So, um, and since this, I'm I'm directing this concert, you have to agree to it. So, um, teasing. These are three of the four symphonic dances from West Side Story. We open with, um, what do we open with, Alex? Mama! Oh, yes. There we go. So, um, every day. Um, Mama to the cha-cha, and then a very hip setting of cool. So, Leonard Bernstein's symphonic dances.
This next song is, uh, is very programmatic. Um, Phyllis Park wrote it. Um, Phyllis Park is an English gentleman who writes primarily for brass band, but he's so good at it that everybody in the wind world asks him to then transcribe and rearrange for wind ensemble. So this is his, um, his transcription of, of his own music, but his resetting is better. Um, this is literally um, depicting a walk reminding of him when he was living in Austria and he would go for a walk on the weekends up into the Alps. Um, and so literally you'll hear him slowly climbing out of the village and taking a walk and enjoying it and the view becomes bigger the higher he gets. And then you'll hear it in the music, the hiker is surprised by a rush of wind and there's some little chaos as leaves and others are, are, are going around and you continue walking through the trees and the wind, and when you come out through the tree line, you're, you're met with the serenity of the, of the only an Alpen Trail can, can offer with the vistas and the huge views. Um, and then there's a return back to the village down the same trail. So this is Philip Sparks' Mountain Song.
maybe we would do some of the awards now, probably all the awards now, um, because the next two songs are really fun, and, and I don't want to break, I don't want to break the rhythm. So um, today's been really interesting because um, it's the first time in quite a while that that I felt like the weirdness of the last two years kind of came back home, and it didn't really, but just enough, because in this group we all know that. All of us are important. Every single person is important because we wouldn't create that kind of beautiful music unless we had all the foods trading off that low C, and unless we had these two beautiful bassoons, unless we had those great horn players. And so when when one person is is negatively impacted for whatever reason, then we all all are impacted. And and so um, today, kids get sick. That's what I'm told. It's not. Um, anything that we need to worry about too much, is it? No. Okay, good. Um, but kids get sick, and in, in a wind instrument, when your throat closes up, you can't blow through it, and so you don't get to play. So um, <clears throat> so we're doing all this music. It's, it's no way an excuse. It's just that at 10 o'clock this morning, the trumpet section went in the other room and said, okay, who's playing what? And they all traded parts, and they rebalanced, and they took care of it. And, and they're just doing a, a great job tonight. But you can't replace a lead trumpet player. You can't replace that kind of energy and that kind of enthusiasm and that, and that, and that raw jazz sound. So um, we didn't mention it the other night at the jazz contest um, because I wanted it to be a much bigger crowd for it. But this year's outstanding jazz performer in the program is none other than our absent lead player today, but I made him get on stage because he had to sit through the night anyways, and that is Parker Jameson. So. Um, next up, let's see. Um, I had the kids vote for everything, as I mentioned. Um, in the symphonic band, it takes a lot of dedication to, to A, make it this far, and B, become an outstanding player. Um, and so um, my colleague that I replaced said, you know what, we should recognize as many people as we can. And so we recognize in the symphonic band um, outstanding woodwinds, outstanding brass player, and most improved. And um, <clears throat> I think it's just darn funny to have a most improved player in this ensemble because they're really good. And but the kids notice when somebody makes that leap to the next level. And it might have been that they were God, they were already really good, but they made a, a leap and they're like, yeah. And the kids notice this year when um, this person every time she had a chance, she took on an, another instrument and then. Uh, Allstate comes around, and she made the Allstate band, and then Solon Ensemble comes around, and I said, you know what, you're a really good player. You should really be working hard because you're going to win district. And so she did. And um, it's just fabulous. It's fun to share in that kind of stuff. So our most improved player <laughs> this year, Ayla Murphy on Oboe and <laughs> Um, the most outstanding, I'm just going to go through these because if I don't, it's going to drive me crazy. Um, the most outstanding woodland, I don't know if you noticed on the cha-cha how just stinking great this woodland choir is. Really fabulous, so fun. Um, but you got to hear her earlier. She is such a wonderful, gorgeous player. Outstanding woodland this year on flute, Miss Anna Caps. <laughs>
sending brass, it is, it's challenging enough, like I said, to learn one instrument. It's challenging for percussion to learn 10, but for our outstanding brass, apparently just playing one or two or three isn't enough. I think he's up to four. It could be five. I stopped counting a while ago because he's really good at all of them. You got to hear him earlier in the symphony on tuba. And then um, he plays bass trombone in jazz band. And then you got to hear him play a duet with Kate on euphonium. And then at graduation, he's going to steal some of the solos from David, so he's going to be playing some, some solo trombone as well. I cannot say enough good things in, uh, about this young man. Um, his future is so bright, and it's just going to be wonderful to watch him grow under the tutelage of the faculty down at Eugene and U of O. Our outstanding brass member this year, Robert Bomar. Always had um, two more awards. One was um, the director's award, and that was given to just someone who the director thought made a huge difference. And this year, coming back from where we've all been, it was so important to try to rebuild community and rebuild a sense of belonging and a sense of being together and enjoying that and embracing that. And um, <clears throat> and every game every opportunity, every chance to play, every chance to make a positive difference in somebody else's life, especially mine. Um, we had the most fun with Secret Toy Maker from the North in December, and then for the first time ever, I had a Valentine's Day in the bedroom. I don't know, it just seemed right, and it was student-driven, and we had a great time, and it was just a great time to see them make creative choices on what their boxes were made of is very odd. But um, this person, more than any other, makes such a huge difference in the lives of so many in the band. And I don't think, I don't think she even knows it. So the director's award this year goes to Ginny Jones. years and filed and did whatever was necessary. And the highest award we have is named after Shirley Nidegger. She was a wonderful presence and spent decades here. I was fortunate enough to know her um, because I would come visit my friend and colleague and get to know her a bit. And the highest award we have is named after her. Um, <clears throat> I always ask the kids when they're voting, I ask the musicians to vote for the best player and the best colleague, someone that makes you want to play better, and generally just the best human, because that's what music's about. So this year, we didn't have the best player, and we didn't have the, oh no, yes we did too. We had the best player, and we had the best composer, and we had the best conductor you could ever hope to have, and every day she makes me a better teacher. So this year, the top award goes to Koharu. <laughs> At the aforementioned Secret Toy Maker from the North event that we had in December, we randomly draw names and kids get to ask what they want. And I get to ask what I want, blah, blah, blah. And we get to, and then we have fun trying to be creative. So um, I just happened to draw Kaharu's name. And just random, pure random chance. But she wanted socks. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. so I got her this really nice pair of socks. But then I thought, I don't think that's enough. 
And so I thought instead of just giving her a gift, I thought I'd force her into giving us a gift. And so she is such a wonderful composer, so I commissioned a piece for us to play. And she's gonna tell you about that now. Um, this piece was written to celebrate our band and just our time together and just getting to play again after the last few years. So it's titled Train Terrasant. That's one of Egan's favorite quotes. <laughs> yeah, he hates me for it, but it's okay. Um, and you'll hear a lot of our pet band charts. Um, you'll hear our fight song. And I just wanted to take a moment to say that I'm super grateful to just have this amazing group who's always willing to read my pieces. Um, and they sound, they make it sound better than it actually is. So thank you guys. <laughs> As much as this piece is a commission from Egan, um, I wrote this piece for you to just... Aww. Thank you. Aww. We just kind of try to love each other. That's what we do. So we hope you love this. This is so great. And you have to leave the microphone over when I grab it. You have to like turn it up because I have to say something and it makes me sad. So um, in your program, which none of you have, but you will have a chance to have it online at some point, or you're certainly welcome to come up here and leave through this. But um, Trey and Terrasant is something that when the students are perhaps not making the best sounds ever, I tend to cut off and go, what trade and tear us on? <laughs> right? Because um, I find it very interesting that they're not making any sound of it. Okay, so, hence the title. Um, some of the rehearsal markings instead of letter A and letter B are A for the day, I hate my life, uh, go somewhere, um, disappearissimo, where else we got? Uh, you suck to get out more. Miss notes, but don't miss the music. Frankly, my favorite. Um, must be a math issue, one assumes. So, there are a lot of inside jokes here. Thank you for putting up with us tonight. This is Trey and Terrace and then we'll end with another chart. But, this is a world premiere. You are lucky, so. <laughs> Take it out, I'll bring it up. Yeah. Okay, great. Cool. You'll know. I'll know.
So that was for you parents. So, yeah. so um, thank you for tonight. Thank you for the cheer. These kids are incredible. And, and they keep me young and happy and making music. And I appreciate you supporting them and supporting the program and being a part of our lives. So don't be strangers just because they're graduating. You're always welcome back and we will always sing together at the December concert, so you, we need your voice there too. So, this is two movements. Um, I do learn things after this many years, like one of them is don't pass out a really fun song just to read for the heck of it in the middle of October because the kids are gonna go, let's do that at the last concert. So, um, this is two movements from Star Wars. We hope you enjoy it. Young children, get in your parents' lap. The first one is Darth Vader, so, all right. Oh. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 